Everybody, I know for certain that you can't see the extent of the circus behind me, but I'm at a Nordic ski race. I'm at the American Birkebeiner currently in Cable, Wisconsin, outside of Hayward, Wisconsin, which if to the cycling fan that sounds familiar because Schwamigan takes place on these trails all behind me. Yeah, absolute circus. I just finished up my second ever Nordic ski race, the American Birkebeiner. I did the elite 50K wave. It is an all day affair. It's been events for the past two, three days. Another event tomorrow. We think of big events in the cycling world as what? Two, three, four thousand people. I could be mistaken, but I've been told that there are 15,000 people skating and, and classic skiing here all throughout the, the three day affair. What makes this event so fascinating is if you look straight on the ground here, yeah, there isn't much snow. Every single snowflake upon which we skied is 50K. Now, granted, I did five laps of 10K. Every single bit of snow is entirely man-made. There is no snow to speak of here. There's sort of this, this total shortage of snow in the Midwest in general. It's been sort of a crummy winter back east as well. So, honestly, the vibe is really high because everybody's so stoked to be skiing in the first place. I got in a couple days ago. We worked the expo the past two days with Untapped. This is rumored to be the world's largest bottle of maple syrup. A rumor started by me. Untapped is the official nutrition sponsor of the event. So we had our waffles on course. We had our gels on course, which of course are maple syrup, a salted citrus. We had our coffee. I had a whole bunch of those. We had our brand new grape maple aid as the hydration. They were absolutely, absolutely delicious. I don't know, look at this. Look at this parade of people. It's like, it's no wonder that there are 9,000 people, I think nine, eight or 9,000 people skating today. Another six all throughout the other days. It's absolutely insane. Nordic skiing is sweet. Oh yeah, so here's a funny story about my race. It was five laps, like I mentioned, and the advantage of being as fast or slow as I am is I got to see the winner finish because he did his five laps in the time that I did my four laps. So I literally watched the guy win. He's pretty quick. He just won a World Cup. Um, as far as I understand, it's a fellow named Gus who's a Minnesotan or maybe Wisconsinite. Super popular guy. It was really cool to watch him finish. I also had saw Jesse Diggins go by. They only got lapped by two women who started 15 minutes ahead of the dudes. They were screaming fast. It was neat. I am, I am not a skier per se. I, I, I pretend. Uh, but I chopped 15 minutes off my time, so that was pretty sweet. The first time I did it, I did a 2.45, and then today I did a 2.30, so. Got that respectable. And my ski career continues. Now look how many people are here. What I've taken away is everybody's uh, incredibly affable. Everybody's very friendly. It's it's even greater dispersion of ages. A lot of, a lot of great male, female representation. It's not like going to a bike race and see 85% dudes. Props to my dudes, but props to the ladies as well. This is awesome. If you look at a calendar, where I am now is mid late February. Here I am in Wisconsin. I'm gonna go home for a day, and then hop in an airplane and go fly to Mallorca. Mallorca is gonna be a great training camp period. And then racing starts straight after. So, let's see how this serves me. I might go for a jog tomorrow before the flight home. Peace out. No children. At the airport, next stop Philadelphia. Kids are in good hands with my mom. What fun. And the airport is empty.
Paris celebrates flying internationally by never being able to sleep. So she's doing pretty chipper for not sleeping Tuesday night. Look at this genius creation. They've digitized and automated Starbucks. Wow. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Almost there. Eres perfecta mujer, de la cabeza a los pies, tú pasas de mi nivel, tú tienes el piquete, de la forma que tú besas mami, más simétrica que un origami, de la forma que tú besas mami, más simétrica que un origami. Eres perfecta mujer, de la cabeza a los pies, tú pasas de mi nivel. So from the frigid cold of the American Burka Biner to here, we just wrapped up a week in Mallorca, which is my first time back since a team training camp in 2015. I have little snippets of things that I remember from that team camp, but it was over the course of looking at my Wanderer map, which is this really cool technology. It's a little bit like a heat map, but instead of rewarding, riding things a lot and creating heat, it's rewarding you riding new roads. And so to have seen the roads that I've ridden uh, nine years ago when I was here for team camp and then to expand that Wanderer map, I mean, we've seen a huge portion of the island. We're here for seven days of riding. We stayed in sort of the northern corner, Poyancha. And from there, we have access to the mountains. We're riding, you know, all the, all the major climbs, Poit Major, Sacalabra, Pas de Grau. We're really close to the lighthouse. We went out to Formentor, which was super cool. And then on the northwest side of them, the whole coastal route had this feeling of riding Route 1 on Big Sur. It's just absolutely breathtaking cliffs down to the water and really sinuous, windy road. So, I don't know. There's something of a throwback just coming back here. I mean, it feels like spring in Spain. I lived in Girona for, what, six years? To have the, the citrus trees popping, the flowers coming up, all the signs along the side of the road indicating you know, how many kilometers to the top of the climb or just the little bike icons. It's such a cycling friendly place here. Uh, over the course of our week, we've probably seen 500 cyclists, often in groups, often in little, you know, a pair of people, a, a group of as many as maybe 10. But you see why this place is just such a cycling paradise. Well, it was largely agreeable. Laura and I went out on our first day, which we knew was going to be the most, most torrential bit of weather. We had just this gale force wind and pouring rain coming down sideways, but there was something that was just mildly fun about it. So here we are on day one. We're up on the Foreman tour. Who do you see so far? We're just in a minor coastal event. Uh, hurricane force winds. We got all sorts of funny terms for atmospheric river, bomb cyclone. I think we're having the Mediterranean version of that. This is this is kind of nice. Now we're just gonna coast all the way home. But yeah, outside of a little bit of wind, I would call the weather here spectacular. We rode 582 miles, 33 hours of riding, 60,000 feet of climbing. Hands down favorite day was the 127 mile day. Start here in Poyancha, go up over the mountains, Point Major, down in Solaire, just switchbacks galore out to Daya, and then to Andrach. Don't know how to pronounce that at all, obviously. Um, 
but for the most part, you're, you're stacking all the climbing in early and then it's largely a flat rolling ride home. That's all I got for now. I want another, another bocadillo, maybe a cappuccino. Mine's in my pocket. Adios, amigos. Howdy, y'all. Flew into Amarillo very, very late last night. I don't know if you hear my stuffiness. Uh, I was sort of milking a very, very, very low grade head cold for the final three days in Mallorca, really hoping that it would go away. But unfortunately, I think sitting in an airplane for 12 hours and traveling literally nonstop for I think 28 hours in order to get here, it's like it's toll. So I'm not feeling amazing. I got a coffee. I'm gonna go visit Hill Sports Shop, pick up my bike, see my old buddy Nate Brown, and then uh, make the migration down to Turkey. That's a wrap on Turkey, Texas, Valley of Tears gravel. That was wild. I finished top dozen at the tail end of the top dozen. Um, I think we knew going in that the sand was gonna be a really significant factor. And uh, so yeah, we hit the dirt at what, half mile into the race, not even, quarter mile in. And then it was the first 10 mile section. You go through this just crazy, crazy thick sand. You could be riding in a line totally fine. I mean, it's like Coxida cyclocross. Having never raced Coxida cyclocross, that's what I'm attributing to. Uh, and if you go an inch to the right, it will just eat your wheel and you'll stop immediately. And that is that is what happened. I think the guy was in eighth wheel. I was probably in 10th or so. And he just goes sideways. He goes head over tea kettle. Um, the guy in front of me crashes. I thought I could sneak through it and unfortunately did not. That literally stopped the field. And so the front, what, seven are up the road. This results in a pretty wild chase. Um, we can, you know, we're doing these 90 degree corners so I, we can see two people snake, sneak away. Uh, Keegan sneaks away with Chase, someone named Chase. Congratulations, Chase, for getting second. Keegan won the race. And then we were chasing about, what, five more guys. A few of them came back. So then ultimately we had a group rotating of what, me, Ryan Standish, Adam Roberge, uh, Alex Howes, handful of other guys chasing, 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 get finally catch up to Brendan Wirtz, Finn Gullickson, and Tobin Ortenblad. Rotate for the next, I don't know, 40 miles or so. And then a couple more attacks go, and at this point, uh, my legs say kaput. So, I don't know. I mean, truth be told, I'm happy with how it all shook out. Like, I haven't raced for real in six months. Um, I've got this, I'm still dealing with a head cold. I'm dealing with not sleeping. <laughs> I'm wildly jet lagged. I was awake this morning at 3 a.m. Uh, I mean, the nerves were real, you know? This is the first race in a long time and I'm really excited for the season ahead and, and I'm I'm happy with how, how it all went. Uh, one week's time, I'm gonna be racing mid-south and yeah, it's good to break the rust off. It's good to tear the Band-Aid off. It's good to do any sort of uh, analogy like that. 
just to get the season going. So good things to come. I'm happy with form and fitness. Uh, what do we see? Five hours, five minutes to do 112 miles, 308 watt average, 328 normalized. Um, highest heart rate that I've seen in a really long time, highest heart rate average, highest average power for that extended period of time. I mean, you know, the kind of stuff that you're, you're going to do in races that you just can't do in training. So very happy with that. And on that note, I'm headed home from Turkey, Texas. Until next time, catch ya on the internet or at the races or wherever I see ya. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.